Peter Maguire is the Chief Executive Officer, XM Australia, who now joins in. Peter, so much drama when it comes to uh, what's going on with respect to crude oil. But now with respect to the waivers from Iran officially having ended, Donald Trump uh, clearly now stepping in. How exactly do you see the situation pan out? Because as my colleague was saying, uh, you know, what Donald Trump seems to be hinting from Saudi Arabia and what their commentary is seems to be a little bit different. Well, good morning. It's, yes, I think it is a little bit different, and I feel as though that there's so many different moving parts in the whole equation. Also, we've got to keep in mind as far as China and U.S. trade talks and whether the Chinese will adopt that strategy to say, well, we would like to continue and defy the U.S. sanctions and continue importing uh, Iranian crude until we've got actually a trade deal set in stone. So there's another part of it that needs to be considered also. Uh, as far as shortfalls, well, we all know that Saudis have the capacity, so does Russia and, of course, the U.S. to make up any shortfalls. But uh, where it sits at the moment, I think it's just going to be a, a little bit of a wait and see. Those inventory levels coming out of the States were very, very strong. And, uh, you know, that's just a, a realisation as far as, you know, how the States is going. So it's going to be quite a interesting matter of days ahead. So are we looking at a complete reset then for crude, Peter? Well, I don't necessarily think a reset, but I feel as though that you'll be getting volatility into the market. Uh, we saw it come down. It's down a couple of bucks from where it was in the last uh, you know, week or so. It's had a little bit of a correction, you know, that exhaustion and uh, probably a little bit of profit taking. But now the sanctions are in. Now comes the next part of the whole journey. And I feel as though that they'll edge up higher from here. I think there's a few more dollars to add yet. I'm, it, it's, you know, I, I think probably in this Northern Hemisphere, summer season, I wouldn't be surprised to take an $80 handle out and you've got a stronger US dollar. So there it goes. It's going to be a fascinating time for crude in the next month or so. Peter, why do you think China will take it sitting down? I mean, the Chinese can come and say that your problem with uh, Iran is not my problem. You can dictate, well, yeah, I mean, you can dictate, you know, where I sell and what American buyers could do, but you cannot dictate where I source my oil from. Well, I think that's, that's it. That's exactly right. That's the situation. And I feel as though that the way that Iran and China will position themselves on this will be quite simply until we've got a trade deal set in stone. And we all know that they left Beijing last night, uh, Lighthouse and uh, Mnuchin, and then they're heading back for further talks with Vice Premier Li or he uh, next month or next, next week, I should say, in Washington. So it's going to be a wait and see how all that transpires and then the mechanisms in the sense will it be resolved and will there be a deal set the other side also is whether president trump and his understanding as far as the technology and what those impacts are he's watered it down as in, in the sense trying to tie a deal together but he may even walk away from the table so again many moving parts many much uncertainty and i feel as though china will come into that negotiation with uh, the u.s saying that we're not backing back on that uh, Iranian crude. Peter, thanks so much for taking the time out and speak with us. Uh, would have loved to have more of a detailed discussion, but maybe sometime later commercial obligations got to move on in the show. Thanks so much.